Here is a very short introduction to the modeling approaches in food processes. I am Ashim Dara from the Department of Biological and Environmental Engineering at Cornell University. Goal of this module is to lead into detailed modules co covering different types of models. So this is just an introductory section. We can choose to group the modeling approaches into physics-based and observation-based or data-driven models. Physics-based or data-driven or observation-based models. Physics-based models follow from fundamental physical laws such as conservation of mass and energy. They provide insight into the physical process in a manner that is more precise and more trustable because we start from universal conservation laws and the parameters are measurable using available techniques. Physics-based modeling processes assume that a model is known, which is difficult in a complex process. Although a physics-based model can be adjusted based on measured data, observation-based models are inferred primarily from measured data. They are more of a black box uh, models to different degrees in relation to the physics of the process. They are good when time and resources do not pop permit a complete physics-based understanding of the processes. For foods, then, uh, of course, physics-based models can be further uh, divided into macro-scale, macro-scale, uh, micro-scale, micro or what's called mesoscale models. Um, for uh, much of uh, th this course or our interest is primarily in this macro scale models. A example of a mesoscale model can be, uh, for example, uh, Lattice Boltzmann uh, model uh, or a micro scale, micro scale model can be a molecular dynamic simulation. So uh, the, uh, the macro scale models are further uh, made up of transport models and kinetics model. So this is where our, uh, a lot of our interests are going to be. Over the years, um, we would uh, like to add these other models in the course, but that is not our interest currently. So our reaction, our interest is this transport reaction framework. And it is one of the physics based or mechanistic approaches. And it's fair to say that it is the most common one. The two broad groups into which we can put physics-based models are the single or multi-phase uh, uh, models and porous media-based models. A, when you have a simple solid or even a mixture of solid, you know, and a simple process, if we are just interested in, in heating this solid, uh, for example, this can be heating of a um, canned solid or in a canning process. This is the absolute simplest process in food. Um, then uh, that would be part of this, this group. Uh, then likewise for fluid, you can have a single fluid being heated um, or you, uh, 
like in a heat exchanger, for example, or a mixture of fluids in a mix, mixing process. It can be using just the fluid equation. So these are relatively simpler processes. The other broad group is treating the material as a porous medium. So here treating this as a porous uh, medium um, and uh, through which uh, transport takes place. So let's get into more details of this uh, porous media um, type of problem formulation. Porous media models can be further divided into uh, the situations where you have large pores, for example, where the formulations are somewhat different, uh, like cooling in a cold storage, for example, or they can be a small pores, like inside a, a, a potato cube during a drying process. So it's small pores. And, um, you know, we can, for simplicity, we can consider them to be rigid, which is not really the case, because as you can see that when things uh, are dried, for example, they shrink and then they deform. So the best um, and the most comprehensive approach would be treating uh, the pores, uh, the, treating the food as a multi-phase porous media like in bread baking where we have water and vapor transport through the pores but also the material can deform greatly okay so that's the most comprehensive formulation now again these formulations can be simplified for different situations. So for example, they can be simplified to uh, the, the one most commonly seen as effective diffusivity formulation, or they can be simple vapor diffusion or liquid diffusion. So simplifications are possible. Within any of the groups inside the physics-based or mechanistic approach, whether it's a single phase or the porous media uh, based models. Uh, models can be more mechanistic or less. So more or less mechanistic. So there is a continuum between totally empirical models that are uh, simply based on data obtained from experiment to a highly mechanistic model that is based uh, mostly on first principles. Remember that even highly mechanistic models are likely to have parameters that come from experimental measurements. So let's go over this with an example. In this case, we will talk about um, a, a modeling of a prying process using a range of uh, modeling approaches. So models can be as simple, in this case, the model can be as simple as a lump system where the parameters are simply fitting parameters obtained uh, from experimental data. We could simply obtain, for example, in this case, water loss versus time and fit a totally lumped parameter model, lumped moisture transfer model, for example. Okay. Now we can improve on this to have a simple diffusion model. So diffusion model, um, where the moisture diffuses and um, and moisture loss from the surface is treated as a boundary condition 
um, where that moisture loss is obtained from experiment. Remember that evaporation of water happens throughout. So this is a big assumption of using um, uh, you know, the moisture loss only as a boundary condition. But it is still a model that has little more mechanistic uh, component than this previous one, than this one. So this one has is little more mechanistic than the previous one. Then uh, moving to more mechanistic models, a common way to approach such phase change problem from water to vapor, as in frying, is a sharp interface um, uh, problem where the evaporation is assumed to happen only at the interface. Evaporation is only at the interface as opposed to everywhere. In this approach, we have two domains. So this is one and two. These are two domains um, where we solve with different uh, properties just the uh, mass diffusion equation or uh, any transport equation in here without any phase change, without any evaporation. The location of the evaporation front is obtained using boundary condition that equates difference in heat flux uh, from the right and, and, and that on the left of this interface to, um, the, uh, to, to equal the heat lost in evaporation. So that is the essence of a sharp interface model. And finally, and so that is more mechanistic than this previous one. So this is more mechanistic than the one before. So finally, moving up into more mechanistic model, we have evaporation here in this model distributed over a zone. So evaporation is distributed over a zone and um, and it's really a evaporation is technically distributed over the entire domain as it is in reality. It can be more at one point, less at another point, but there's evaporation everywhere. As we go up in this mechanistic aspect, so as we move from here to here, um, we, we also have to realize that uh, the computational challenges also increase. Now in most cases, as we are trying to develop a model for a food process, we are really interested in quality such as color or safety such as destruction of bacteria. Process model gives us temperature or moisture at any location at any time. So if this is a, a, a French fry, and um, the temperature and moisture varies throughout the, the domain uh, and with time, but we have this information from the process model. Uh, in other words, we have the entire history of temperature and moisture. In the simplest approach to modeling uh, quality or safety, good enough for most situations, um, quality is predicted by combining this temperature or moisture information with the kinetics of the quality parameter such as color. Of course, we need to know the reactions that lead to color and how those reaction rate constants depend on temperature. So by doing that, we can actually predict because we know temperature and moisture at all locations inside uh, the, the material, 
we can predict by combining the color kinetics we can predict the color formation at any location at at any time um, so in an analogous way chemical safety or microbiological safety can be predicted by combining their kinetics with temperature or moisture information for example um, we can combine the kinetics of acrylamide a carcinogen formed in heating of potatoes at higher temperature with the temperature information at uh, any location and time to predict acryl acrylamide formation over space and time in this way we can do uh, in the same way we can do microbiological safety prediction and we can calculate uh, microbiological concentrations as a function of position and time uh, depending on the situation to summarize then Modeling approaches can be physics-based or data-driven, and each have their own advantages. Physics-based models, which is mostly what we are concerned uh, here, uh, can be grouped into simple solid or, uh, or fluid models and porous media models. And range of modeling approaches are possible for the same process from empirical to very detailed uh, physics based. And quality and safety are predicted by combining models for temperature, moisture, etc., with kinetics of changes in quality or safety parameters. Thank you.